Star Wars 7x7 episode 1865 today. Romance in Star Wars and why it is such a big deal. <laughs> Let's go. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. And here's the scoop. So, a while back, not too long ago, I did an episode examining the potential for a relationship between Rey and Ben Solo and whether that would come to fruition by the end of The Rise of Skywalker. And it's turned out to be one of the most commented upon episodes that I've done in a while. And I wanted to revisit it because there are a couple of things that I feel like, you know, based on the conversation that's developed around it that I just wanted to clarify a bit and wanted to talk about the notion of romance in Star Wars just in general as well. So I think one of the things I should probably say at the outset, just to put all my cards on the table, is that I personally am not a fan of the Ray and Ben Solo relationship dynamic. In other words, I don't necessarily want to see them in a romantic relationship by the time the Rise of Skywalker ends or, you know, any at any point during <laughs> the movie itself. That being said, the episode that I did where I examined the possibility that they could get romantically involved was really more about looking at the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy and knowing that the sequel trilogy has had a lot of echoes of previous trilogies, if you will, to look at the comparisons and see whether there was enough evidence to justify the storytelling heading in the direction of a Ray and Ben solo romantic connection, and also to look outside of it to look at other storytelling situations and archetypes and tropes, if you will, and see whether there was evidence or justification for pursuing that possibility. And I believe that it's there. I believe that it exists. So, you know, the foundations are there. It's not out of the realm of possibility. But ultimately, though, I just want a well-told story and I want justification for whatever outcome they're going to give. That's ultimately what got me thinking about the whole notion of romance in Star Wars and just how necessary it is. I mean, after all, Star Wars is referred to in the genre of space opera, and you might as well replace space with soap, right? I mean, it's essentially a soap opera, a melodramatic situation, and, you know, they are kind of in a similar genre, except just one's taking place in space with space battles and whatnot. But I think what it comes down to more than anything else is an emotional completeness, if you will. So I'm going to say the human experience, and in Star Wars, obviously, that's not the case. That's a bit limiting. In fact, I'll say, you know, the sentient species experience, if you will, involves love. Like, it's incomplete without love. Not just, uh, you know, love among friends or love among family, but love among romantic partners, right? And so without that element, life just feels incomplete. And in fact, that's, I think, also one of the reasons why Star Wars succeeds where another particular franchise does not in its way. And I'll talk about that after the break. But additionally, I think one of the things that helps with Star Wars and what makes it so compelling is the fact that because they're bringing every level of emotional involvement into it, they're bringing every type of love into it, it also creates the kind of emotional jeopardy that makes it so compelling too. I mean, you know, when you think about, say, for example, the original trilogy and Luke being on Dagobah and having these visions about Han and Leia in trouble and needing to go to Bespin to try to rescue them. Well, part of it is because, yes, they are comrades in arms, but additionally, at the time, he had the hots for Leia and didn't know <laughs> that it was his sister. So, yeah, there is a romantic driver there sending him off into battle. Similar with the prequel trilogy, as Anakin and Padme start to develop their romantic relationship, it puts their jeopardy, particularly on Geonosis, in a much sharper light. And that right now is what we don't have in the sequel trilogy. That's, I think, the one element, for me at least, that really truly seems to be missing. And so, when it's missing like that, and 
because of the fact that it's the second movie in the trilogy, in the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy, where things got overt in the romantic relationship side of things. Because of that, I think that's why I at least, and I think a lot of people were looking at Ray and Ben Solo so very carefully because ultimately that was really the one relationship where there was a complex emotional dynamic that was developing. I don't think you can really fairly say that about Finn and Rose. I mean, they were just getting to know each other and obviously she has you know a very strong admiration for him, but beyond that, they're not complicated enough, not emotionally deep enough for it to have been something that we would look at legitimately. But they certainly set that possibility up for Ray and Ben. And I think we all just as viewers, as fans of Star Wars, want to see that element brought into play. And so... You know, then it gets a little bit emotionally confusing for all of us as viewers because on the one hand, we want that dynamic to happen. And on the other hand, like, oh, I don't know if we want it between the two of them. So yeah, that makes things a little bit more uh, complicated, if you will, as a viewer, depending on you know, where in the whole relationship building thing you sit. So when it comes down to it, I will say that when it comes to the rise of Skywalker, if there's one thing that I wish for out of this movie, it is a fully realized and believable romantic relationship. Who it's with, well, you know, I'm doing my best to leave that open <laughs> to interpretation and let J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio decide how that's going to be most believably achieved. But that, I think, is the one thing that I am most hoping for. I know it's a really tough thing to wish for out of every other thing that needs to be wished for when you're going to be ending a trilogy of trilogies, a story saga that is 42 years and nine movies in the making, but it just give me a believable romance. That's ultimately what I'm looking for. And we'll talk about that other franchise again, as I promised, after the break. Stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by Constant Contact, the premier email marketing solution for small businesses and organizations. I've used their service since 2003, and over the past decade and a half, I've watched them evolve, make the product simpler, more powerful, easy to use, and do everything that they can to help train people to use the product more effectively and for it to work with other forms of marketing like social media, for example. So, Check out sw7x7.com slash email to learn more about Constant Contact and start a free trial. Once again, that is sw7x7.com slash email for a free trial. Welcome back. So the other franchise that I'm thinking of, I'm thinking, of course, about Star Trek, naturally. And yes, it has its romantically emotional components. I mean, certainly William Shatner was quite the man about town. <laughs> when he had the opportunity to be. And yes, there was an interesting kind of dynamic between, say, Riker and Troy and Star Trek The Next Generation, and you could go on and on and on. But ultimately, that level of, I guess, emotional connection and then being played for emotional jeopardy, yeah, doesn't quite match up by comparison. And I do think that the comparative rarity of Star Wars when looking at Star Trek, yeah, that has a factor as well. Like, you get more emotionally invested when the content that you're getting is comparatively scarce. I'm talking from a live-action component, right? Yeah, obviously, the Star Wars Expanded Universe, once it kicked off in 1990, like, there was a ton of that content, and so you could obviously follow that all the way down the rabbit hole. But as far as live-action stuff, certainly Star Wars paled in comparison from a sheer amount standpoint to what Star Trek has produced over the past, you know, 30 odd years. But the fact that it was scarce and the fact that it had romantic situations and emotional jeopardy, I feel like, you know, helped to make it more compelling in its way. And, you know, it just, it pierces a little bit deeper for me at least. But that's my take on the subject. And if you want to share yours with me as well, by all means, let's make this another highly commented episode too. That would be awesome. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. That is going to do it for today's show. And as always, may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.